So we're gonna start tonight's class in a nice child's pose, but I want you to take uh, your blanket, which should be folded up, and you're just gonna place your knees and your ankles onto the blanket. So you might just need to adjust it slightly just to cover that, that space. So it's kind of child's pose. Knees are gonna be as wide as comfortable for you. So if you have super tight hips at the minute, bringing your knees slightly closer might be nicer for you. Um, and just sit on your feet just to start. You're gonna, just gonna lift out of the hips slightly, make your waist slightly long, try to puff up your um, ribs, and then we're just gonna walk our hands forward, dropping our head down to the mat. And if the mat does seem far away, you're welcome to just grab a block and just pop your head on the block. So if you come down to your child's pose and you think you can make your knees that tiny bit wider, you're welcome to just to get a little bit more into your hips. And just starting to bring some awareness into our breath. If there's any breathing techniques you'd like to do, you're welcome to. Just for tonight's class, I'm just gonna ask for that this first couple of poses that just you bring this awareness to your breath. So not necessarily counting it or really focusing on deep inhales or anything, just bringing a little bit more attention to it. We obviously breathe all the time um, and we never bring any attention to it. So just like to just give it that little bit of love. Knowing that your breath is there to serve you during your practice. It's there to guide you and help you move through the poses. And it's also where we go to in times of struggle, maybe in class, so in times when we're doing a deep stretch or holding something under tension, just tapping into our breath can help our mind. So in our child's pose, our focus here is we want to try and bring our, our hips down towards our feet. We want to reach our hands out from our body. So almost lifting our, our um, arm bones out of our shoulders. And then tucking our, our armpits underneath us. Making sure your arms aren't splaying out to the side, they're tucking in. And hands are spread nice and wide. The roll has come down, turned slightly. So the, this base pose of a child's pose with our arms is similar to the position that our arms would be in in our down dog, keeping our neck nice and long. And just picking up your gaze slide, we're just gonna walk our hands over to the right hand side and then just resettle back down into the pose. So making sure you're pushing that left hip down towards your heels and you'll feel a nice stretch in your left side body. And if you want to increase that stretch slightly, you can pick up your left hand and just place it on top of your right hand here. And if you do make that adjustment and it doesn't feel right, you just bring it back a step. I say all the time in my yoga classes that this practice is for you, it's for nobody else. And whatever your body is feeling today is how you should move it. Breathing into our left side body here. So again, keeping that awareness with your breath, feeling it maybe expand more in your left hand side than your right. We're gonna take one more breath on this side. And then exhale, just lifting your gaze, walking your hands over to the left hand side this time, and then resettling that hip back down towards our right heel. Still with our down dog arms here, or if you want, placing your right hand on top of your left. Just noticing if one side is feeling any different than the other. Nobody is perfectly set, symmetrical. Just 
knowing that the your mat has you this evening, so really letting your body sink down into it. And then just coming through to center again. And this time we're just gonna bring our hands behind us this time. Your palms are gonna spin up towards the ceiling, forehead's gonna come down to the mat and just relax your shoulders down to the mat. So you might feel a little bit like your face is squishing into the mat here, but this is a really, really good posture to come into when you maybe have a practice that's got a lot of work on our shoulders. So just really let your shoulders droop down. Taking one more breath here. And then exhale, just slowly bringing yourself up, tucking uh, your hands, not tucking, just placing your hands underneath your shoulders. Your knees are directly underneath your hips. So we're gonna come into a melting heart pose here. So that idea that we were saying with our downward dog arms, you wanna keep that. So walking your hands forward, keeping your hips up nice and high. We're gonna create a lovely line from our hands all the way up to our hips. So if you think about downward dog being broken into three stages, so we start in a child's pose, we come into a melting heart pose, we come into all fours and then we push up the downward dog. So your hands are spinning to 10 and two, so slight turn in your hands and pushing the ground away with those hands, letting our chest melt down towards the mat. If you've been sitting at a desk all day, this might feel nice for your upper back. Letting the chest expand. Just breathing into the space in your front body here. And keeping your tummy nice and tucked in, we're just gonna come back up to our all fours. And then we're just gonna come into a quick thread of the needle here. So starting to twist into the body. So inhale, reaching that right arm up to the ceiling, palm spins away, and then exhale, weaving that right hand behind the left, resting your right arm onto the ground, right temple is gonna come down to the ground, right forearm comes down to the ground. So you wanna think about your right shoulder really pushing into the mat here, and your right, your left hand pushing in the mat so the back, your back body will light up. Then we're just gonna add in a nice calf stretch to this. So you're just gonna straighten out your left leg and come up onto your pinky toes on your left foot and then pushing that heel away. So we're twisting our body, we're opening our back body, and then we're stretching into our legs. So this pose is working all through our body for us. Taking one more breath here, and then rebending that left leg, coming back up onto all fours, nice elbow crack there for me. And then inhale, sweep that left leg up, left arm, sorry, up to the side, and exhale, weaving it behind our right wrist. Arm comes flat on the ground, placing our forearm onto the ground here. And then if you want, reaching that right leg out behind, pushing out through the heel. I'm feeling a nice stretch in our calf muscle here. So your hips will be up nice and high. Again, pushing the ground away with your right and left hand. So you're expanding through your upper back into your thoracic spine. One more breath. And then placing that knee back down, exhaling back up onto all fours. We're just gonna sink down onto our knees here. So you should still be on your blanket so your knees can be nice and padded. And we're just gonna do um, some wrist work here. So just clasping your fingers together. We're just gonna circle our wrists out and just change direction. So if you're anything like me, when you do this, especially like I said, if you've been sitting at a desk all day, this will make a lot of clicks and a lot of pops and that's absolutely fine. And then just taking our wrists into some waves here making them really small and then making them a bit bigger. And just changing direction again, your practice, whatever your wrists are telling you this evening, just move in that way. And then just bringing our, our right palm 
out in front, flexing our fingers back towards your face, taking our left hand and just gently pulling those fingers back just so you can feel a stretch all along your forearm. So pushing your right palm and letting your fingers drop back. We do a lot of stuff in yoga on our hands, on our wrists, our planks and our down dog. So wrist health is really important. And then we're just going to turn that 180 so that our, our hand is now pointed, our fingers now pointed down toward the ground and then pull again. So it just changes the stretch slightly. And then just bringing that hand up by your ears, just going to do a couple of circles with the shoulders. Just rotating that arm back, keeping that arm as straight as you can. And then bringing it down to rest, and then the other hand. So right hand, sorry, left hand comes up in front of your face, flex your fingers, and then just lightly pulling those fingers back towards your face. Feeling a nice open in your, opening in your forearm. And then turning it 180 so our fingers are down towards the ground and then pulling it back. So you might feel like you're doing the same move, but because our forearm is made up of two bones, as we twist round, those bones twist over one another. So it just changes the stretch slightly. And then release, and then just bring that hand, circle it back just three times. Again, you might get a lot of pops and clicks, and that's absolutely fine. Just staying where we are, or if you are uncomfortable on your knees, you're welcome to come down to a comfortable seat. Bring our left hand wide, inhale, sweep it that right arm up. And you wanna really reach out of that side body, so try not to dump over, you wanna keep it nice and high. Finding length is a lot more important by bringing it down. And then turning your pinky fingers down towards the ground. So anything in yoga where we reach our hands above our head, you want to think about your pinky, your pinky fingers spiraling down towards the ground. Keep grinding down to that right hip and then inhaling through the center and just swapping up to the left hand side. So reach out to the left side, hip goes down, fingers go up, find that all that length and then reach out to the right. Again, pinky fingers down. So your palm will be facing behind you. We'll be doing things like low lunges in class tonight, so making sure that your arms go into that inward spiral. And then inhaling through the center. Just bring our right hand to our left knee, our left hand, just gonna go across the small of your back so you kind of your fingers will peek out to your right hand side. Inhale to lift out of our pelvis and exhale to twist. So pulling that low tummy up. So every time we twist, we wanna think about finding length to the spine. And then on an exhale, twisting round. If we don't have that length, we don't have the space to move. And keeping those shoulders down our back. Give you one more breath here. And then exhaling out of it through the center. This time placing the left hand onto our knee. Right hand's gonna go across the small of our back. Inhale, reach out and exhale, twist and round to the right. Making sure our right shoulder isn't creeping up in this posture. This is just a small bind variation that we've got going on here. One more breath. And then exhale to unwind coming through the center. And we're just gonna come back onto our all fours here. Oh no, wait, we're not. I missed out the best bit. Sorry, come back down, <laughs> come back down to see this. It is the best bit, trust me. Right, we're gonna drop our um, right ear over to our right shoulder. So just starting to feel an opening on our left hand side. We're going to place our right hand on top of our left ear. So literally just place your hand on your head, don't pull it down, just place it on. You'll start to feel a bit more of an opening, you're more than welcome to close your eyes down here, it's a lovely stretch. And then if you want to increase that further, just bring your left hand just to hover over to the left hand side. Let that left shoulder peel away from the ear as we feel a nice opening stretch in our neck. So if you want to even nod your head back and forward, you can. If there's any sticky spots you want to kind of stay in, you can. And 
and just coming through the center. If you lifted your left hand, just placing it back in your leg, and then keeping your head exactly where it is, take your right hand, put your right hand to your right ear, and then use your hand to prop your head back up through center so it doesn't get a sudden shock. Right, dropping our left ear down to the left hand side. Placing our left hand on top of our left ear. Seeing how that feels, and then if you want to lift your right hand just slightly off the mat, you can. See, you're glad I went back to this, this pose. Again, you can close down your eyes, maybe nod your head back and forward. Feeling that neck really start to open up, letting those shoulders really drop away. So we don't really want our shoulders up near our ears. We want to keep them far away from our ears, down our back in a number of yoga poses. And then coming through the center, placing our right hand back on our leg, lifting our right hand, using it on our head to prop us through the center. And now we have a lovely stretch next. And then rolling over ankles, now we can come into our all fours. We're going to come into our cat cow here. So cat cow is a shape that I do in literally nearly every yoga class I do. It's a really good way of building up the shapes in which we need to do things like our plank and our downward facing dog. So hands are directly underneath their shoulders, knees are directly underneath their hips. On an inhale, think about moving your hips forward. So you're going to tip your tailbone so it's up to the sky. Your tummy button is going to come down towards the earth. Your shoulder blades are going to come down, down your back and then lift to your gaze. And pulling your tummy up so you're you're you should be active through your um, core here so this is our cow pose and you want to think about your hands dragging back and your knees dragging forward and that'll lighten up your front body and then using the ground really pushing in we're going to move from our shoulders this time so push the ground up so you start to round through your back and then ripple down your spine as you then tuck your tailbone under and then let your gaze drop so that it kind of comes to your knees and this is your cat so this pushing action with the shoulders expanding through the back body keeping that low tummy pulled up and one more breath here and then exhale coming through to neutral here so in our neutral spine our tailbone just ever so slightly tucked we want to keep pushing that ground away but not as much as if we we're coming into cat back so just we talk about as if you just so you can catch so we feel like when you're driving just so you can feel like the clutch catch just so you can feel your front body start to lighten up then pushing into our right hand so much we start to lift our left hand and spinning our palm in left hand's going to be in line with our shoulder here Thinking about all those actions, then we start to lift our right leg behind us. Right foot is going to spin down towards the floor. And if you need to take a little peeky look, you can. Make sure your feet aren't coming too far over to the left or the right. So it should be a nice straight line from your hip. And your hips are squared down to the mat. So you want to think about turning those toes down towards the ground. And we're lengthening here basically from our fingers and our left hand down to our waist and our waist down to our foot. Keeping that engagement, active from finger to toes, and then exhale, bringing our, our knee and our hand back down to the mat, and then picking up our right hand here, reaching forward, and then picking up our left leg. Again, you can peek down, making sure our left leg isn't playing out to the side, toes are going to spin down towards the mat, hips are square. We're active through our front body here. Pushing into our left hand. We want to keep our spine nice and long here. So with your gaze, try not to lift your gaze too high. So just looking at the top of your mat. Then exhale, bring them back down. We're just going to come back into our bird dog on the other side. So lifting your foot, lifting your hands, checking your alignment, thinking about pulling everything in towards your midline. As if we had an invisible line drawn through the middle of our body. And on an exhale, you're just going to bring your toes down to touch the ground. Then inhale, pull them back up. Exhale down. Inhale back up. Using our hamstrings to lift that leg back up. And then swapping up to the other side. 
left leg behind, right arm in front, and keeping your leg in exactly that position, so making sure it isn't flying out to the side. Exhale it down to the mat, using your hamstrings so and your glutes, bring it back up. Exhale down. Inhale back up, one more. Exhale down. And inhale back up, placing your hands on the mat, and then we're just going to sink down to a quick child's pose. So a lot of transitions in yoga go from our down dog, lifting our leg and into our low lunge. So when you're lifting your leg and your down dog, you want to think about that, that glute and that hamstring engagement. And just coming up onto our all fours, just picking up our left foot. We're just going to place our left foot in between our hands. You're welcome to keep your right knee padded if you want here and you come into our low lunge. So inhaling up into our low lunge. So deep bend in that front foot, front knee, sorry, left knee directly above that left ankle. And we're lifting from our hips, our waist, all the way up. And we want to think about our tailbone being tucked under here so we aren't into a deep back bend. And that's inward spiral of our pinky finger to the top. Chest nice and broad, shoulders away from the ears. Oh, I'm wiggling a bit. Taking an inhale here. Exhale, placing that right hand just slightly off the mat and twisting to the left. Keeping your legs in exactly the same position as they were when your hands were lifted. You want to keep a strong base. Inhale, reaching up, using your core to keep yourself steady. And then you're just going to bring your hands across the small of your back and you're going to grab opposite elbows. So your, hand, your arms will nuzzle in at your waist here. Making sure your ribs aren't splaying out. Inhale, lifting out of our hips. On exhale, we're just going to bend over where our arms are. She's coming into a small back bend here. Opening through the chest, melting those shoulders down your back. Keep pitching into that left leg. And then exhale to come through the centre. Placing your hands onto the mat, we're going to step back in sort of plank shape. So thinking about everything that we talked about, we were on all fours. So magnetizing our pubic bone to our sternum, pushing the ground away, pushing our heels away, dragging our hands forward towards us. Dropping to our knees, we're just gonna shift our weight slightly forward, then bend with the elbows, come into your chaturanga. So elbows are really tight into the body, slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Untuck your toes, keeping your hands where they are. And as if you've got a marble under your nose, you're going to roll it forward and lift it up into your cobra, squeezing those elbows together. And then exhale back down. One more time into your cobra, cobra, roll it forward. Shoulders away from your ears, just lifting your gaze slightly, pushing your feet into the ground. Then exhale, going back down to the ground and then pushing up. And just coming into our melting heart pose again. Head down to the mat, open through the chest. And coming back up into our all fours. This time, picking up our right foot and placing our right foot in between our hands, coming into low lunge on the other side. So even before you lift your hands off the ground, you want to think about you having a really strong base here. So right hip's going to come back, left hip's going to come forward, squeezing the hips into the midline. Slowly pick your hands up and once you've got your balance, lifting your arms all the way up into your low lunge here. And taking some nice breaths, feeling a nice stretch in our left hip flexor as we bend deeply into our right leg. Keeping our ribs nice and tucked in, tummies engaged. And exhale, left hand's going to come down, heart's going to spin open to the right. Really active through those fingers. The subtle move of even just being active through the fingers opens this shoulder up even more. Taking one more breath here. And exhale, coming back up through the centre, keeping that base nice and strong. This time, we did this in our class last week, we're going to come into our Kali Mudra, so like our little water pistol, reaching the arms up so our, our um, biceps are in line with our ears. 
then pushing out through those fingers and exhale just coming into that back bend again. She's lifting, finding the line. One more breath and then exhale, coming through the centre, placing your hands, stepping back into our plank, pushing out through your heels. Your, um, you want your elbows, your elbow joint sides to be pointing towards your knees, so really wrapping those shoulders in. Magnetising your front body, pushing through the arms, you can hold it, then dropping to your knees, keeping that tightness with your core you created in your, your plank, shifting your weight forward and then exhale, lowering all the way down to the mat, taking your time here, feeling those triceps work, untuck your toes, this time coming into the exalted cobra, so hands are going to be nice and wide off the mat, it's allowing us to really reach into our chest. Fingertips are going to be forward, elbows up to the sky. Same with the, with the chest, so roll the chin and the chest forward. And then pushing into the ground, grinding down through your tops of your toes, even your baby toes. Then exhale to come back down. We're going to do that one more time. Really focus on your legs this time. Inhale up, push those legs into the mat. And exhale down, placing your hands down, back into a melting heart pose. So remember those down dog arms here, so really pushing the ground away. Give you one more breath, and then inhale back up to our all fours. So we're gonna go through another flow this time, we're gonna introduce up dog. So we're gonna do three rounds of this flow. If at any point you want to come out of up dog and go into back into that cobra, you're more than welcome to. But I'm going to cue you up dog. So coming back into your plank. And you can drop to your knees as well. I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay up for the first one and then I'll drop to my knees so I can show you the variation. So inhale, shoulders over your wrists. You're rolling your toes forward to your right and your tippy toes. Exhale, you're going to just come down halfway, flip your toes and then push them out away. Scooping your chest forward. Your, the only contact points to the mat are your hands and your feet. And then exhale, pushing it back into a child's pose. So that is our high plank down to chaturanga into our up dog. So we're gonna do two more rounds of that. So inhale, come back up to all fours, then back up to your plank. I'm gonna show up dog from knees on the ground this time. So inhale, shoulders over your wrists, drop to your knees, keep that core, bending your elbows, coming down to a right angle and then pushing the ground away, turning to your toes or flatten the ground, lifting your hips and your quads and then exhale, pushing it back to the child's pose. So one more round of that. So on the next inhale, we're going to come up, come into our plank really strong, shifting weight forward onto your tippy toes, lowering halfway down to the mat, flipping your toes, pushing the ground away, scooping the chest forward, shoulders down your back, one more breath here, then exhale, pushing back to your child's pose. Just taking some breaths here, maybe build up a tiny bit of heat during that flow opening into our spine a bit more. Your next inhale, just slowly making your way back up onto your all fours, picking up our left foot. And then we're just gonna place our left foot just to the outside edge of our left hand. And then picking up our right foot, bringing our right foot to the outside edge of our right hand. And we're going to come into a wide legged forward fold here and our feet are going to be turned out to the side so you'll feel a nice opening in your hamstrings here. We're just going to hang here for a couple of breaths. If you want to just clasp your hands and place them at the back of your skull you're welcome to. So even just a simple forward fold there's a number of variations we can do here. So this variation just opens the hips slightly, works under our hamstrings. Give you one more breath here and then exhale, bringing your hands down to the mat, walking your feet 
so that they're directly under hips coming into a forward fold and picking up all 10 toes then placing your toes back down creating a really solid base this time bringing your hands to the small of our back clasping our fingers reaching our knuckles away and then coming into our forward fold so we're getting a bit of a chest opener here and you're more than welcome to have a deep bend in your forward fold taking one more breath then exhale to release inhale to halfway lift so shoulders are coming in line with your head lengthen to the side body and exhale to forward fold inhale bend your legs sweeping your arms up coming all the way up to standing palms are going to spin in towards one another reaching out of the hips then exhale hands through the heart center coming into your forward fold and we're just going to grab our block or your butt here just so that you can have slightly straighter legs they don't have to be straight and you can really grind down your hands from nice and flat and we're just going to do some calf and ankle work here so this will be building up our strength and we do a lot of things in high lunges and things it takes a lot of pressure our ankle so grinding your hands into the mat you're just going to inhale to roll forward coming up as high as you can in your tippy toes then exhale we're going to roll back all the way so that we're lifting our toes off the ground activating the back of our legs inhale to roll forward picking up our heels getting some strength into those ankles then exhale roll it back pick up those toes move that one more time finding strength in our feet so just like we warmed up our wrists at the start we need to warm up our feet and then exhale rolling onto your heels picking your toes up and then placing your feet onto the mat and forward fold you can place your block out to the side and then we're going to walk our feet back onto that funny kind of shape that we had so our feet are going to be turned to 10 and 2 toes are just going to be off the mat inhale sweep your arms up and then on exhale sending your hips back and down coming into a yoga squat and just bringing your hands into the um, inner creases of your hips or your knees here sorry and pushing your knees out just getting into our hips a little bit and you can sway from side to side if that feels good so we don't want our knees collapsing in so we do come into things like lunges we want to make sure our knees are really stable taking one more breath here then exhale coming into that wide legged forward fold again inhale to halfway lift and exhale placing your right leg back left leg is going to stay in the same position dropping your right knee down hands are going to come directly under your shoulders and we're just going to come into a lizard here so i'll talk you through some progressions so you can stay upright you can tuck your back toe and lift that back leg and if you do lift that back leg make sure it's active it's really push through the heel of that back leg so you can feel your quad working you can take your block and you can start to lower yourself down to the mat and as i said at the start of class if you go into a variation that you think is too much you can take it back a bit so keep pushing into that back heel if you have that leg raised and with your left knee don't just let your left knee drop to the side it needs to be active so think about squeezing that left knee back in towards your body and we're going to stay here for about five breaths so really tapping into your breath here. Exhaling out a sigh at any point. And then dropping that back knee down if you lifted it. And then rising ourselves up. And then walking our feet to the middle, sorry, our left foot, so it's in the middle of the mat. We're just going to come into half splits here. So your right, um, sorry, your right hip, yeah, it's going to be directly above your right knee. So if you need to move that left leg forward a bit, you can. And you can bring your block underneath your, your left um, calf here, toes directly up towards the ceiling, and having a slight bend in that left leg. And then if it's comfortable for you, with a nice long spine, start to fold over that left leg. So we want to keep our hips nice and square here so making sure that our left hip isn't shooting far in front and our right hip is dropping back so imagine our hips are in a nice straight line so with things like lunges and standing splits and even the full splits 
which we don't do very often. Um, you, this is the kind of um, this is the position we're wanting our hips to be in. So nice in front. This is a nice stable and so and this is a nice stable position and solid. Taking one more breath here. Then exhale, just removing that block and then stepping your left foot back to meet your right. And then picking up our right foot and placing our right foot to the outside edge of our right hand and our right toe is going to turn towards two o'clock. And we're coming into lizard on the other side. So again, you can come into any of those variations. If you want to stay high up um, and really sink into that right hip, you can. If you want to increase it, you can obviously pick up that left leg, keeping that left leg active though. You don't just pick it up, you got to do something with it. Or again, bring your block if you need to, or kind of straight down to the ground. But if you come down to the ground, keeping your spine nice and long, we don't want to collapse into anything here. We want to still find length in areas of our body. So shooting from our left heel all the way to the crown of our head, keeping our shoulders away from the ears. We're going to stay here for five breaths. Plenty one more breath here. And then dropping that left knee down if you lifted it, slowly making your way up. And then bringing that right knee back to our left knee and then we're just going to drop into child's pose here but we're going to keep our legs together for this one we've just done a lot of hip opening just feeling all those tiny movements in your hips the inner seat of your legs and then slowly walking your hands back through to center and then we're just going to come to sit on the mat and we're going to bring our legs into a straddle here. So legs are going to come out to either side. And you want to think about your, your knees pointing slightly behind you. And if this is a difficult position, you're welcome to sit on a block or you can take your blanket and roll it up. We're just going to reach our arms up here. Remember our palms spin in. We find a nice length through our side body. And we're going to bring our left hand just to the inside edge of our left knee. And then reaching with our right hand, keeping that length, we start to reach over to the left hand side. And like I said with our lizard, we don't want to collapse in. We want to keep that chest nice and open. So even if you can collapse in on yourself and reach your foot, that's not the where we want to go with this. We want to keep everything nice and open. So getting a nice stretch on the right side body. And if you want to even take your left hand to your left foot to find that little bit extra stretch, you can. Keeping the chest open. You should feel a nice opening in our inner left thigh here and our right side body. Well, spiraling that heart up, keeping our spine long, grinding our right hip into the ground here. If you feel like your right hip's lifting, pushing it down towards the earth, you might get more of an intense stretch then. So we're getting a nice stretch in our hip as well. I can stay in this pose all day, so sorry, sorry if you're if you're struggling with this one. I promise we'll take one more breath, and then on exhale, lift your right hand. Don't come out of the pose just yet. Go lift your right hand over to the right hand side, and imagine someone's grabbing your right hand and they're pulling you all the way through the center, and then just sitting here in the middle for a little bit, regrouping, see how you feel, and then we're gonna go to the other side. So lifting our left arm up, grinding down that left hip, place our right hand, you can place even your right hand onto your um, legs and reach over if this is enough, or bring your right hand down to the earth. Spiraling that chest up, pinky fingers are spinning down towards the earth. And when we stretch, we talk kind of about layers and stretching, so you might come into a stretch, it might be really difficult, stay for a couple of breaths and you can go a little bit deeper. So just see how that feels. If you want to even reach your right hand to meet your foot, you can. Also keeping that left hip grounded and trying to keep your legs not from turning in so your toes are going to be pointing out behind you.
Feeling a nice stretch in the lower left corner of our back as well. Taking one more breath here. And then exhale, lifting that left arm. Don't rise just yet. And as if someone was pulling your left arm all the way up, come through the center. And then bringing our knees into the middle and just giving ourselves a quick cuddle. So we've just opened through our chest. Now we're just going to roll in through our back. Just roll around a little bit here. And then just scooting your hips a little bit. If you do still have your blanket, maybe taking out from underneath you if you want to use it for your Shavasana. And then rolling down onto your back. And then we're going to come into a supine twist here. So you're going to bring your legs up into a tabletop shape. So your knees are going to be directly over your hips. And this is the shape you want our legs to be in on the ground. So you're welcome to bring your toes down just so you can shimmy yourself and then bring your legs over to the right hand side. So knee is in line with your hip and your ankle is in line with your knee. So a nice right angle. And then we're going to open our left arm over to the left hand side. And you can bring your right hand just to sit on top of your left leg here. Just finding a nice twist. Because we are coming in towards the last poses in the class. You can kind of let any pointers or, or attachments to anything just go. That lovely breath you had with you during class to start to release that slightly. You can even start to think about softening your gaze. Letting your body start to get a little bit heavy. Taking one more breath here, then inhale, bringing your knees back through the center, shimming your hips slightly to the right this time, and then dropping your knees over to the left hand side, keeping that same bend. So knees in line with your hips, ankles in line with your knees, right arm can drop over to the right hand side. We tend to finish our yoga classes with twists, just as kind of one final detoxing release. A yoga teacher said to me once, imagine like, a, you know, like a dishcloth. You come to class as a really, so, you know, a dishcloth full of water, and at the very end, there should only be a tiny bit of that water left to you wring it all out. You're just releasing any final things you need to from your body. Taking one more breath here, then inhaling, bringing your knees through the center, hugging them in one more time for one final little hug, little cuddle. And then exhale, slowly peeling your body out, just coming to lie on your mat. And if you do have your blanket hand, if you want to put your blanket over you, you can. Letting your feet go at least mat width here, dropping your feet out to the side. And then just bringing your hands somewhere that's comfortable. And just taking any final fidgets that you need to. You don't always go into every yoga pose perfectly. Taking tiny fidgets are important to ensure that you will find the pose. Maybe rolling your shoulders down your back. And then together, we're all just going to take a big deep breath, fill up your lungs, hold it at the top, take in a tiny sip more air, and then exhale, release yourself down to the mat. And just find a couple of moments of stillness here in your Shavasana. Just letting any thoughts go and just finding some quiet.